You're listening to Big Blend Radio's Happy Hour Show with Nancy and Lisa, and you just heard Clouds in Advance, the very first track on Parting Is, which is the latest solo guitar album by John Durant. You can go to his website, johndurant.com, and that's John with no H in there. And you can also go to his website, burningshed.com, where you can get the album Parting Is, and also on Amazon. But welcome to the show, John. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, we're doing good. good. We're doing good. I mean, I'm actually, I'm glad I had uh, traveled within to have played that first, but I'm actually glad Clouds in Advance because when you listen to Clouds in Advance, you a lot of us wouldn't think that that was guitar. Uh huh. That's. I I thought it was funny that you started there because of that very thing. It sounds nothing like a guitar. So your your listeners are all very confused right now. I'm sure. <clears throat> and they're thinking that I had too many cocktails. <laughs> well, you know. exactly. You know, one too many cocktails, and who knows what's going to happen with a guitar. <laughs> that was all maracas, by the way, everybody. There was no guitar work in the, you know, it's all complete percussion. <laughs> there was an oboe. Did you hear that? No, I'm kidding. But yeah. but this is amazing, the guitar work. I mean, it's it really is unique. I don't think I've heard a guitar album like yours ever, and I love it because it takes me into like a – almost like an embryonic state where we're like new, like new to the world and have like just complete innocence and one with nature. That's what it feels like for me. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. That That's, um, that's fascinating because one of the things that really initially concerned me when I was making the record was that I really felt like, I was I was being completely exposed. I was totally naked. I was just, um, you know, because it's just me and there's no, I'm kind of doing this thing that's that's very different from what everybody else does. Mm-hmm. But in the past, when I've done these things, I mean, I've been doing this for, for uh, far too many years to count, 25, 30 <laughs> years. Um, and the thing about it is I've always put, a piece like clouds in advance. I've done this for a long time, but it's always been in a context where there's been percussion elements and there's been bass parts and there's been uh, normal guitar parts. And there's, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it becomes an element. And one of the things people always assumed it was a synthesizer, you know? Um, yeah. Easy enough to make that, that assumption, but um, no, it's just me processing the guitar and, very unusual ways and uh but it is cool. it, it's got me just feeling totally um sort of stark naked <laughs> naked is good yeah it's free yeah I, there's a free sense to it <laughs> no because i think but there's a really i mean it's it is a very internal sound it's it really it's like part of your, i don't know how to explain it but it does feel like it's part of a body you know like our body not, not bar- body sounds that we don't want to hear but it's kind of yeah. like a it <laughs> yeah, just got to clarify but you know it just feels like a very intimate album as well and to me it's it's it just flows and and i when i listen to an album you know especially an album like this one and your album uh, parting is I don't really look at all the titles, as you can tell everyone, but um, <laughs> I I just listen, and so it's just this, you just float, and I think everyone needs to listen to this because we need to calm down. We just had that interview <laughs> about high-conflict people in the world. We need to calm down, people. We really do. We need, you know, and there's that. This I want is to go not a high-conflict record, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need this, and we need to, like, I don't know, red wine would be really nice to listen to this with. I think it's nice Malbec. It just reminded me of a place I used to go as a kid at the, in the in Tahunga in California. There's a little stream, and you could watch the leaves just kind of float down the little stream. And it just kind mm-hmm. of made me feel like that. Hmm. Sure, yeah. Um, and and interestingly, I mean, I the artwork on the album cover is also not an accident. And um, I guess I probably didn't credit it, but it's actually my photography from hmm. Iceland. And wow. Iceland is one of those places that unfortunately too many people are starting to find out about, so I shouldn't yeah, say anything yeah. about it. But it is one of those hmm. places where 
you can still go drive hours and not see another human being on the road. And wow. it's, it's spectacular. And so, you know, there is a lot of that. And the whole, really the whole idea behind the album was, was that it was never, A, I never had any idea that I was going to do a record. Uh, hmm. And, and, and cool. B, the idea was just, this is sort of what I do almost on a daily basis. It's these sort of almost meditations where mm. I, I, what I, I'll do is I'll try to clear my head completely and go down uh, into my studio, pick up my guitar, and start with one note, one chord, and have no mm. idea where exactly I'm going to go with it. And then everything flows from there. And um, I tried to, as much as possible, there's uh, several pieces, including Clouds in Advance, Mm. were done entirely live there's it was just kind of it happened in that moment and and I left wow. it like that and um you know the the pieces that are like that I I feel really strongly that um there were a couple that I, I thought oh I should really redo these I, I there's one little bit that I don't feel that great about and then I thought no, no, no that's going to ruin the vibe <laughs> so yeah hmm. I, to me, it's it's very, it just flows. I mean, it's it's amazing how you're making these sounds. So, I mean, are you layering and looping? I mean, to have one person. <laughs> yes, um, and and interestingly, uh, that's kind of one of the one of the things I was very early on was with looping, and I I try a lot of this is is like looping except these long delays that don't actually loop but eventually kind of disappear and other elements get layered in and so it it kind of it's what I call cloud guitars and I've uh, mm. the notes kind of hang in the air and hang around and hang around but you don't really notice when they go away and you sometimes don't notice when they start, you know, and, and, uh, you know, much like a cloud, right? You, yeah. There's no real mm. discernible beginning or end and, and cool. it kind of, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's different where we're looping and there are a couple of tunes on here that, that have loops, um, where the loop is, it's a consistent thing in it and it just keeps repeating and repeating. And, I'll play over the top of that. But most of this, um, this album, I, I don't end up, didn't end up using the loops. I may have started with a loop at one point and then mm. taken it and reconstructed, oh, this is what I did. Now let me reconstruct it and then I can make it not loop like. I can play it all live and I can, I can move the elements in ways that you can't do once you've got them set in a loop. Wow. Mm. You're a trip, man. <laughs> well, you know about the cloud part. I dig that because it's like cloud syncopation and you could sit and, and that's what I'm saying. This is good for us, man. There's like a calming peacefulness to this that just is like, okay, I really need to hear this. You know, and I, your album is like, I don't, you know, I always talk about listening to, you know, music in the car on a road trip and I can see really there's some pristine areas. I want to take your album and the Redwoods are calling, man. Mm. Like I really want mm-hmm. to go up to Northern California and mm-hmm. the Oregon coast. And like, that's, I'm in that place because of just yes. those big, you know, rugged cliffs. And I know you spend time in Portland. So I know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And yes, there's little yes, deer indeed. and, you know, fairies in the forest. And like, it's that. Oh. Ab- you know, absolutely, absolutely. It's that there's a place. there's a ton it's of that, magic. and um, you know, it's funny. I I hadn't even thought about it until um, you know, just hearing the end of your your previous conversation, it it really did um, kick in to me that that must have been going on in my brain because there's so much negativity that's going mm-hmm. on right now, and I. Yeah. As as recently, I mean, I, I'm trying to think now. I started this album in summertime, mm. so there's been an awful lot of negativity leading up to that. And I I honestly had no plans to do this until um, 
a friend of mine in Turkey had asked me about, you know, how, what do you do on a, on a daily basis musically? How do you, how do you get yourself motivated? And I started explaining this process, this sort of meditative thing. And I sent like an iPhone video saying, you know, here's, here's an idea. And she came back to me saying, you know, why, why don't you record these? And I said, uh, because I, it's kind of the antithesis of what I'm thinking about, right? I'm thinking about just being in the moment and not, you know, as soon as you hit record, you know, you're in the studio, right? You hit record, yeah. you're on. And everything then is structured by what's going to take, right? Or, well, tape. Mm. <laughs> I'm an old mm. geezer, I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> but the whole idea was that I, I wanted to uh, remove myself from that place. But I thought, okay, well, what happens if I do? Does it change anything? And it turns out it didn't. It turns out that, that I, I think some real magic happened. And I think you're right. I think it's this, it's this um, trying to expel all the, all mm. the negativity around us. Mm. You, I, I really, it, it's, it is meditational music in a way, and I think people need this kind of music to get there. Um, at times because of the, you know, our minds go crazy when we say, okay, now we're all going to calm down. It's like going back to school, like boys and girls, don't fidget, stop poking, you know, all of that. (laughs) It doesn't happen. But this, you know, music really is this universal tool and language and and heartfelt thing. And, you know, the meditation part of it, when you were talking about the clouds, you know, I have a friend um, who does those – Buddhist bowl things and and mm, yes you know mm-hmm. and you go around and around and I can't remember the name and then sometimes Makeda so she she's an awesome publicist <laughs> anyway she does these and she goes up on Instagram and Facebook and will film it and I'm just like please stay there and do that and sometimes I'll email like come on Makeda I need another one because <laughs> what's so neat about the sound it's the same thing like you know the and with the little ting of a bell and you listen mm. to that sound linger on a bell. You know, you ring it once. It's that one thing, and you listen, and it's used in meditation. And those oh, bowls, totally. when she does one, she'll start one, and then it'll start its thing, and then mm-hmm. she'll start another one, and you're like, dude, this is cool, man. <laughs> yes, and, just... and part of it is, yeah, the, there's, I mean, there's there's real science behind what's actually going on, but ultimately it's the, the, the bowls are tuned in such a way they ring and, and when you get, you know, harmonic convergence of a couple of them, yeah, really wonderful things happen. Really magical. I think it makes us slow down and actually take a breath. Mm. Oh, and, totally. totally. You know, and it's and kind it looks, of circular in a way. Yeah. You, you know, what's great, too, with the bells, too, is, is because you get the initial hit, right? There's the attack when the, when the hand mm-hmm. sort of knocks the bowl. You get that first ting. Mm-hmm. But it's what happens after. It's all that. It's all those overtones that are sort of uh, hanging about in the air, and um, you know, put in the right space. But they're just uh, something else. You know, it's interesting because things like this in your music is you will listen. It's kind of a remember how to listen. Yeah, you know, know. and yeah, it it's um, remember to be grounded, remember when you could just breathe, remember. It's kind of, to me, it's like bringing you back home. It's like, okay, everything's crazy out there, but you don't have to go out there. Mm-hmm. You can. You know, and that's funny, too, because I have, um, because I'm an old geezer, and I, I grew up <laughs> on, on LPs, and I. Um, oh, yeah. I have a, I, I have a memory, and I, I wish I could get, back to this space and I do sometimes now that vinyl has come back Um, thank god (laughs) but I used to I used to love when I would get a new album and I would put it on the turntable and I would uh, just be completely immersed in the Mm. music and 20 minutes later you've got to get up and flip the record over (laughs) and then yeah and we didn't have you know our iPhone buzzing us we didn't have right. any of these things. It was me and the music, and I was completely engrossed. And I, I can remember, you know, dating back to the to the early to mid seventies. That was entirely my listening experience, and um, 
uh, it's it's actually really gratifying to hear you say that about my music because I I hope it's like that I I yeah. you know I I try to make it a an engrossing experience that you sort of want to dive in and sort of let the music take you over for fifty minutes and and then you can get on with the rest of your day. I want to paint to it. I know. I, was I don't know. That. It's, 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 it's sure. yeah. You want to. You want to create mm. things. It's very creative, and I, I also, by the way, love your album label, uh, your label, your your record label, Alchemy, Alchemy Records. Records. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, that's, that's like the cool. perf. That's perfect. <laughs> it's like I just I I feel like you're doing wizardry, you know. So it's like, what's your studio look like? Do you have like wizardry magical things in there? No, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, no, I've got a lot of photography down there. Um, mm. Some of my own. I I had a, a radio promoter from Nashville uh, who, who did some amazing work. I uh, have a thing for water and he mm. just, he could capture it really well. Um, nice. And uh, yeah, I uh, because I got into photography about 10, 15 years ago, I, I, I've got a bunch around and it, mm. it sort of has begun to take over. <laughs> nice. Cool. Are you on Instagram with it? I want to see. <laughs> well, uh, you know what's funny about my Instagram? Um, what ends up on Instagram is, is entirely about food, actually. Oh, cool. <laughs> Which is one of I'm going to have to find you on there now. Cause... Well, we, have a, we have a really funny thing that goes on here. My, my wife and I have Friday night as our date night. Cool. And we have this running this running joke. It's it's um, Friday night at Shea JD, and there are people who assume it's a restaurant that we go to every Friday night, and it's 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 just home. And um, you know we have she she works and has a has a proper job, and that's how we manage to live the way we do because nobody can make a living in music at this point. But so <laughs> she comes home, and and I. You know, I've cooked a uh, delightful meal and made cocktails, and and uh, we've had a really hard time finding a, a decent place to eat here south of Boston, and um, so wow. instead we just stay in. And and it's a bit of a running joke. You know, we have people you know trying to get reservations. And <laughs> oh, how funny. oh, that's cool. Oh my gosh, I love that because there was that restaurant on TripAdvisor created their own TripAdvisor account. And all the it was in London, and all these people kept trying to book, and they're like, "Sorry, we're booked up." <laughs> and it had all these five star reviews, and no one. It's a fake restaurant. <laughs> oh, how funny! And they got all these That's reviews, strange. and then finally, they just th- this person just said, "Okay, screw it. I'm having a, a pop up <laughs> night," and uh, and people came and got to like at the back in the backyard or something. It was in downtown somewhere, London. I don't know. Oh, but London. they, yeah. how do you get all these five? See, this just shows. Yeah. How half of that stuff out it's, there is just it's full just of it. Nonsense. It's I know just that nonsense. well put. Because <laughs> it's just like, how do you get five star reviews to a place that you no one's been to, been to? You know, and how does a trip yeah. Yeah, Come on now. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> but that's, yeah. I think you should set up a TripAdvisor account and a Yelp I, account you know, and I, see I, what happens. Right? That's it. I, I, I swear you should, see, just so we yeah, can I'm watch. Gonna take, I'm going to take marketing advice from you. There we go. I just, I know, just like you know, create fake accounts, and um, then the Russians will come out after you, you know. <laughs> you know. But the other thing about about this album too is, you know, listening to the whole thing because it has that flow, and it isn't this. It's not obnoxious, you know. There's this, this like Nancy says, it's it sneaks up on you and draws you in. Do you see this getting used in movies? Or video? Oh, I, I gosh, I'd love visual. to. I, uh, I'd love to, and we've been trying to make that happen with Burnt Belief and my own work. And yeah. It's a really difficult thing to get into, and mm-hmm. part of it is, is because there's a ton of people that want to get in. It's one of the few places you can still make some money, but even the people I know that are in there doing it aren't doing anything near what they used to be doing. Hmm. And a lot of them are like, well, yeah, I'd put it in front of my music supervisor, but then, you know, that's cutting into my business and, you know, so wow. it's a, it's a challenge. It's a really difficult challenge. And it, what it really means is that the right person needs to hear it in the right place and go, yes, that's what I want. And then yeah. it opens up. It's a, and until that happens, you know, mm. you keep 
throwing it out there and you keep trying to get it in front of people and, and, you know, and hopefully maybe someday something breaks. Well, you just keep going. Yeah. You, yeah. And the internet helps, you know, in some ways it helps and it doesn't help, you know, and yeah. how do you, when you look at like an album like this, I know there's the, there's all these categories and like def, definitely instrumental. Right. But sure. Do you think people would label this as new age? Sure. Because and of the I, comments. I, I, and, and I, yeah, and I don't, I don't actually run away from it in this case. I mean, it. Once upon a time, that actually, you know, you, you, you know, it was a marketable thing, wasn't it? And, um, you know, it became a, a bad word for a while. And, um, but I don't think it's a bad word. I think, I think it's, um, especially with a record like this, it. It definitely falls into that category. On the other hand, it's a lot more adventurous than a lot of what mm-hmm. got marketed as New Age, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Wasn't it David Lance who started it? Like the it, whole New Age? Sure, David Lance? Yeah. There was, he was certainly one of the, the originals. Um, you know, there was yeah. all the, the whole Wyndham Hill scene and yeah. Um, yeah private music and Narada and all of that. It gets into this big thing and then everybody goes, okay, now we're going to go and play disco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like now it's something else, you know. You know um, so, yeah, it's it's amazing uh, how these things come and go and change, you know. I just, because I think that it is a calming thing, your album, like I was saying earlier. But I want to ask, uh, you've done this, right? But what's going yeah. up with on with the Ukrainian folk music? Mm, yeah, so... Um, that started a few years ago. Um, Colin Edwin and I had done um, a couple records together, and he got involved in this project over there. He got brought over there to play a, a show with another group he was in. Hmm. And the promoter got him in touch with these these uh, women that were singing this, this folk music, and they wanted to bring it into a modern context. And uh, he, like me, is fascinated with music from other cultures around mm. the world and uh, said, sure, that would be fascinating. And he got involved and he um, was working early on on one of the pieces and uh, wanted my opinion. And I said, gee, this is really interesting. Um, do you want some, some of my guitar on here? And he said, I hadn't even thought about that. That would be great. So I did a guitar part, sent it off, and he said, oh, that works. Here's another one. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I had been, played on basically a whole record, and <laughs> everybody was all excited about it, and they had gotten uh, on a huge festival in Kiev in the summer, and so they flew us out there, and we played this festival, and and it was great. It went really well. And they liked it so much, they brought us over to London in September, and we did another festival there, and that went great. And two weeks after that, the whole um, political uh, debacle mm. happened where the president was deposed and then Putin annexed uh, Crimea and everything, and mm. everything went dark. Mm. So... <clears throat> hmm. Turns out in 2016 the record came out in Ukraine, but nowhere else. Hmm. And um, hmm. out of nowhere, uh, this past year, um, I got another call from Colin saying, um, "So, in the interval, you know, one of the one of the women had left. The other one had gotten married, had a baby, and but now she's back working and." Oh, she's written some new material. Uh, do you want to get involved? And I said, Yeah, sure, absolutely. Love her singing. So we this time I I got much more involved in in terms of both playing and also composing and and it's fascinating because the way it works is we just get a vocal track with you know no harmonic instrumentation or anything just the vocals and we have to build a track around that so it's a wow. fascinating process and hmm. um wow i'm really excited about how it's coming out and 
So I'm hoping that that will be done by the end of this year, but it's, it's a little unclear. There's still a few vocal parts and Ina is actually in New York at the moment and um, will be, she's in a show there and I'm not sure how long she's going to be. So it'll be a little while before she's done. So that may, may throw our timing into a bit of a loop, but um, certainly by, by early next year we'll be done. And, and uh, we're definitely, instead of just leaving it to, the Ukrainians, we're going to do, uh, I'll release it on Alchemy and Colin will release it in Europe. And, and then if they want to license it over there, that's fine, but we're going to control the rights to it. So. Well, you got to keep us posted. I want to hear. Yeah. I'm fascinated. I, I love music from around the world, mm-hmm. like Portuguese music mm-hmm. to me. I'm really fascinating. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I don't, you know, just yeah. like that drama of it all. Well, I this mean, is, yeah, see, this is our, this was the thing with Burnt Belief was that our our starting point was taking elements of Middle Eastern and Indian music mm. and putting it together with progressive rock and, and jazz fusion music and doing it in a way that just didn't sound like anybody else and, you know, and combining it with my ambient textures. And um, the result of that was, was really... Uh, I thought extraordinarily cool, and and uh, who knows? I'm sure we'll do something else in the in the future as well. But the oh, Ukrainian cool. thing is next, and yeah, it's just you know uh, this album less so. I had some pieces that I that I had gone sort of um, more in the Middle Eastern zone, and actually it was my Turkish friend who said, "No, no, don't do those on this record." Mm. <laughs> so. You know, hey, they, to, you to know, save, this, them, save them for when you and I do the record together. We're talking about doing some things cool. together. And she's a wonderful musician over there, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Oh, this is <laughs> awesome! This is so Plenty exciting. Where that come from? <laughs> yeah, because there's there's a very um, oh man, it's I, I I feel like going to the redwoods with this one. Parting is, um, but at the same time, I feel like I could be in Ireland, I could be off the the Isle of Man, you know, that kind of mm, thing. There's, yep. There's yep. just different places you can take it. It's, I don't know. It's got the ocean. The ocean is in there. Oh, that, for sure. Returning to the departure, that is, that's like you've got the ocean in there, man. I can hear it. <laughs> it's there. I bet the yeah. beach. You know, uh, like it was the, actually it was actually the the returning to the departure was actually the departure lounge in in uh, in Barcelona. So so wow. Yeah, okay, there's the sea. Um. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know about, like, you know, departure lounges, you know, no. <laughs> Unless you have the hotel bar. That's the whole thing. And everyone, you've got to follow John on Instagram. This is such a cool, like, account. JD Alchemy. Okay, everyone. There's yeah. so much oh, food here. And, <laughs> man, I'm hungry. I'm in, Look at I'm this. In so much trouble. <laughs> man, this is so cool. A lot of travel. So you like to travel. You like to cook. Yes photograph and make music that's like a nice creative blend we like this, this yeah is, we do this sounds like nancy and i except for the mm-hmm. cooking we need help um <laughs> ah, cocktail making, okay. we'll join you well no we, we each have our our things that we can do but we've been on the road for the last well now we've been home for a year but we were on the road full time for three and a half years and then oh, cool. came home and started to try and cook again and went what like how do you well, like we discovered it was we really discovered fun. smoke alarms is no, really we, what yeah. we did and we also discovered we didn't have any pans yeah because we gave everything away we're like here yeah. you know we and don't like yeah, it again so we buy ingredients um, yeah, yeah pans are important if you're going to cook yeah but we're like what do we cook it out there we're like so if you can't can do everything on a pizza you can you know get some get some you know tongs and hold it over the open fire i guess but oh yeah that's, hey, that's i don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich with an iron <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it that's that's hotel stuff so all our hotel friends are going to yell at us no, you can make a it. tuna casserole in a, in in a coffee pot in a coffee so, maker so the last time i went to press my pants that was you i got it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Why? That's why you have dryers, so you never have to iron. But okay, so Ukraine, going to Ukraine. What is the food like there? I've never had Ukrainian food. It's 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 very different from anything else I've ever had. Um, uh oh. <laughs> and I I feel I feel terrible because I've got terrible brain block at the moment. They they make these wonderful, um, stuffed. Uh, the Polish call them pierogies. And I forget. Oh, what they yeah. Call them in oh, like empanadas. Terrible. Yeah. 
terrible of me to forget that. That's because they're wonderful and they, they have different fillings that they do and oh, yeah. um, mm. lots with beets. I love beets. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I love those kind of like, like, is it, I'm just looking it up. To, oh, some of them I was trying to Google it and some of it has honey and Okay, I like. Like, let's just leave it for other people to to talk about. That's like I don't want to ruin what they've. What goodness? What all I know is whatever just came up on the images looks really good. So this is so cool. So you do a lot of travel, which is nice. Where was the la- was Ukraine the last country that you were in outside of America? Uh, no. In uh, so in the fall. Um, my wife and I actually celebrated our 30th anniversary going to Ooh. Spain and southern France. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Now that was, is cool. Yeah. So it Wine. was spectacular. Good food we out did, there. In fact, in fact, we went to uh, the Rioja region. Um, specifically because we really like the wine from there and Mm. um, Mm. ended up doing a a wonderful winery tour where they cooked for us in one of the wineries. And, oh, it was just delightful. That's cool. Mm. That's cool. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is about your work with your kids because this is, Mm. you know, because Nancy and I, we were in a band together at one point we were kind of touching with that in the um, first interview, but like I didn't realize half the band was like we're drug addicts and rapists, like honestly, and I'm not joking. But the other part was wow. really cool. And then I learned don't date the bass player. Nancy learned don't date the drummer. But anyway, we had a good time. It was interesting. Anyhow, so I learned a lot. Let's put it that, that way. My, yeah. my, my son who's a bass player is a wonderful man. Don't say okay, that. I won't. Tra- a, I'm not trashing bass players. I love bass players. He's, a, he's, a, he's players. a cancer researcher at at wow. West Cornell. He's not, you wow. know, he's not a bad wow. guy. Cool. Yeah, he plays the bass, but you know. No, the bass is cool. <laughs> but the thing is, it, basically, we learn don't date bandmates. Yeah, don't. Yeah, be, no, well, well, don't date bandmates. Yeah, that's that's never that's never. Well, a, uh, yeah, yeah. No yeah. stuff um, happens, but, but it makes good music. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked for Fleetwood Mac for a year, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, there's enough drama um, after that. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but if you sell 50 million records, it might be worth it. Yeah, that really. Well, we uh, never got to that uh, level. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's okay. Neither did I. So, um, but yeah, no, you know, working with my kids was amazing because. Um, it was at a time, you know, when I took a little break for a few years, and, and a lot of it was out of frustration with how things were, were going mm. in the music industry. And, of course, mm. they've only gotten worse, but um, yeah. the music has to be made, and there it is. But, it, but the timing was sort of perfect because they were, they were young teenagers and, and really beginning to – take shape as musicians and um, by a, a fluke of timing my high school band uh, got back together the original idea was we were going to have a lovely dinner and just hang out first time we'd seen each other in 25 years and the um, the week before of course everybody's saying oh we got to play we got to play and the bass player was like guys I wouldn't even know where to put my fingers Mm-hmm. Um, but my son said, sure, I'll do it. You know, he's 14 years old. And, and, um, so on Wednesday he hears the tunes for the first time and on uh Saturday night, he played them flawlessly. Wow. And the drummer from the band was like, okay, we got to do this all the time. I'm buying a drum kit. He hadn't played in 20 years. And, and he said, I, I've got to get a drum kit and we're going to get back into it and we're going to start playing. And, and my younger son, who's a guitar player at the time, was, was 11, and he joined in. And within a year, we were playing some very complicated music. I mean, we were playing Porcupine Tree songs. We were playing Sigur Ross, Bowls. It was, uh, cool. it was ch- challenging and fun and exciting, and um, it was great. I, it was the, as as satisfying as any musical experience I've ever had just because you're watching your kids sort of grow and develop mm. right in front of your eyes and doing it in a way that was 
uh, I just can't think of anything more fun than playing in a band with your kids. That's <laughs> you know? awesome. It's mm-hmm. really spectacular. And, um, yeah, it was great. We had, we had so much fun. Uh, awesome. uh, yeah. So. Yeah. I think that the, the arts took a big beating, like, okay, and everybody can publish their own book and, and everybody mm. now thinks they can write because you can publish your own book, and they forget that maybe you need to know how to spell, and you ha- you need the talent of writing, and you right? definitely need an editor. So you've got that. And then uh, in the painting world, it, when prints came out, there went a lot of the value of art, and uh, so the art world got shook by the print market. The writing sure. world got shook by the internet and the ability to publish, and the music world got shook by the internet and hologram. And <laughs> that's really <laughs> funny. And uh, I'd like to make some holograms of my own. It would be too much fun to put ghosts everywhere. But yeah, um, you know, I just feel like it'll come full circle. I don't know when where um, those who are really, really ultra-creative will... will Rule the world. Yeah, they'll come to the top. They, like There are certain things that cannot be replaced by robots and mass production. Yes, and I, and I just yeah. think what has to happen is that people have to care enough. Yeah. Is what I it comes agree. down to. Um, it... it, it because if if people just want to you know watch who was it at halftime at the Super Bowl uh, Justin Timberlake uh, Justin Timberlake whatever um, if that's all people want to consume that's fine they're welcome to it um, yeah okay <laughs> yeah I, you know. I didn't watch it I didn't we don't we don't know what ha- we don't know anything about football except for men in tights running around with big shoulder pads and then the music half time thing it's like no well, whatever we can giant spectacle later. of totally you know uh, generic mass produced stuff to, to mm-hmm. design to get um, people yeah. going woohoo and um, yeah no I, I, it just doesn't <laughs> you know um, yeah it doesn't but move you know, me in any way. Did he lip sync like everybody else? But can I just say what is fun to do if you have to watch football? You turn off the sound. Yeah, I, that's what we do. And then I, yeah, speed and it then up. And then you put whatever kind your choice of music on. It's well, too much and, fun. And, and, well, and in, and in fairness, I did watch because, of course, you know, I'm, I'm here mm-hmm. in Patriots territory and, and we lost. Uh-oh. And that's fine. Whatever. Doesn't doesn't bother me. Um, but what I did do that was hysterical was um, I put on um, the last uh, three tracks from XTC's album Skylarking um, <laughs> while this was going on, which are so totally not what, what was no, going this is on great. in the music, right? And there were moments of of sync where the beat of the music was synchronized for for a few seconds with the mm. the gyrations of the of the dancers and what have you. Oh, that's awesome! And and it was just hysterically funny. I I I thought that was brilliant. You know, we did. Um, if you fast forward through a football game that's recorded, it oh, is it's really funny. we saw we saw it like a little part of it, and we fast forward to fast forward out out of it. And you saw them getting the cup, and you saw the guy walking with the the, the whatever I suppose that's the Super Bowl. It's oh, no the, 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 trophy, the football. Yeah. You mean yeah. the trophy? Okay, the thing, mm-hmm. yeah. And the people trophy. are now this guy is walking, and the way he's walking, everybody's stopping and kissing the football. And I'm like, dude, you never know what you're gonna get. But anyway, they're walking down, <laughs> and. <laughs> And the guy looks like a penguin because yeah, of he's he sped up. I mean, he looks. I mean, if you don't speed him up, he's walking normally. But because Florida. he's stopping on either side, it's like it's it's crazy it weird. So funny. If mm. anybody's you know recorded this, go and do the end part of the Super Bowl totally sped up, and then yeah, put Benny Hill music mm. with it. Benny Hill music yeah, sure. or the best or the Nutcracker Suite. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, that's for when they're actually playing. Yeah, the Nutcracker Suite. It's is good awesome. for football. I'd watch soccer that way because I like soccer because everybody falls down. <laughs> everybody <laughs> falls down in both of them. But anyway, that's just a crazy uh, thing. But I love that. All right, it is time to play Happy Hour, Uh-oh. John. I know you're going to like this. <laughs> I like 
practice meditations, music, <laughs> cocktails, <laughs> Super Bowl, yeah. travel, food, Ukrainian pa- pastries. You know, this is good. I like this. <laughs> so uh-huh. if you could spend happy hour with anyone alive or passed on, who would it be? Where are you going to spend this happy hour? What are you going to drink? Is this going to be a, a John concoction? And what are you going to talk about? We want the scandal. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> I thought about this, and and obviously you'd think you you got to have a musician, right? Musicians well, aren't. It, you start talking music, and it just isn't fun. It's happy hour. You're supposed to have a good time. Right. So I thought about what about a writer who makes me laugh? Cool. Uh, and and so I I I decided it had to be Christopher Moore. You know him? Oh. I'm trying to think. Now I just went to the. I went to Christopher Walken's. Was my immediate. No, yeah, who's no. Christopher? Chris, who's, Christopher Moore is a is an amazing humorist who um, uh, has written books such as um, Lamb, which is the gospel according to childhood friend. Oh and my gosh! It's, <laughs> the, it's it's the story of the missing years. So so Jesus and Biff as teenagers. Um, <laughs> And 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 then he wrote uh, Fool, which is um, King Lear, but told from the perspective of the jester. <laughs> oh, I love that. And, and then and but my favorite of all, and why I would have to have happy hour with him, is he wrote a book called Sacre Bleu, <laughs> and it's it's about it's about the color blue. Yeah. And it's about art, and it's about art in turn of the century. France and uh, one of the one of the main characters is Toulouse Lautrec and cool. it's um, mm. hysterically funny and um, body um, you know uh, there's mm. it, uh, mm. it, it's it's France um, I I learned how to how to test to see if a baguette is done you crack it over a kid's head. Um, <laughs> Bonk. No high and conflict personalities I, 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 there. None, none, none whatsoever. Uh, did I say that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's one of the funniest books. But what's really impressive about that book is that his research into the art and into the color making, the making it, you know, where the pigments mm-hmm. come from, yeah. is impeccable. Mm. And when he's describing the art and you start, if you know the piece, you, you start thinking about that piece in, in whole new ways. And if you don't know the piece, you start Googling it. You start going, oh, my God, look at this. I, I never would have seen this. But he's, he's pulling out all these other elements of it. And um, so, yeah, so I would want to pick his brain on all of that because I, I'm fascinated by, by how he researched this book. Um, so cocktails, what are we going to Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. Yes. Do you know that little skunk? Everybody knows that well, little skunk. Well, funnily enough, yes, I do. In fact, I, I just just this this uh, Christmas time, I went to see the uh, the um, Bugs Bunny at the Symphony, and they, they actually did one of the Pepe Le Pew pieces. I think it's everybody loves Pepe Le Pew just because you want to keep uh, walking around going, Pepe, Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> 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 oh, great. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's it. Oh boy. Okay. So uh, you're gonna so, you're gonna have cocktails. What are you drinking? So, so what oh, go are ahead. Drinking? Um, I, well, I guess because well, it's February. It's cold. It, it was snowing earlier, and then it turned to rain, and then it's gonna freeze overnight. So it's miserable. It's 80 right? degrees so. here. You want to come hang out in Tucson? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I'm thinking that degrees. might be a good idea. Um, so. Mm. So I'm thinking we're going to have to have my my bourbon vanilla Manhattan. Ooh, there you go. With with, with cardamom bitters. <gasps> mm. Cardamom in there. Yeah. I like that. Now wait. Yeah. So the vanilla. Are you doing? Are you taking the vanilla? You know how people do that with vodka. And yeah, stuff you can. Like the yeah, you can infuse. Yeah. You can infuse, and I've actually done a really great um, vanilla butter infused bourbon. But no. What Ooh. I use for the what I use for the vanilla is actually the forty three uh I'm sorry, thirty three liqueur from uh Spain. Well, well. 
see, this is why he travels for us. Um, bleu. I know. Pepe Le Bleu. bleu. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, so you, this, this drink, that's right up our alley. That's, you say the word vanilla and you say bourbon, like yeah. you've got us there. Like yeah, we're and there. you've got to use good, good bourbon. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. We're going to real. Kentucky. <laughs> We're going to Kentucky you, this to year. My, the bourbon trail. To do the bourbon trail Excellent. this year. My, my, my brother lives in Kentucky, and we went to Thanksgiving this year, and, and oh, totally worth it. Oh, cool. Totally cool. Worth cool. It. Yeah. We can't wait. We You're can't wait. Have a blast. Well, we love yeah. it. Awesome. We're, we're you excited. You're going to get into so much trouble. That's I, right. I expect, I expect a report. <laughs> oh, you'll see it. Follow us on Instagram. We have a pink sock monkey called Priscilla. Um, that goes, she's our travel mascot because, you know, going to all these parks and stuff that we do. And we take photos of her because no one should see what we get up to. But everybody can watch her. We thought it was for kids, for people to, you know, show kids about Priscilla goes to the park, the museum. But she's had, she's a, she's a, she's a diva, but she's a dirty diva. She's a slut. Mm. She is a slut. But anyway, this conversation's going so well. Okay, so you've got good bourbon, you've got vanilla, you've got a really cool cocktail, you've got Chris Moore, the author. Where, where mm. is this happening? So do I get to, do I get to, you know, get in the TARDIS and go to turn of the century France? Sure. sure. Hey, wait. Yeah, wait. there we go. You're going, yeah. wait, 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 and then wait. wait. You can wait, 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 wait. I have something for this. Okay, everybody get in to the time machine. <laughs> See? <laughs> now, where did you get out in France? So, it's, it, you know, it's it's Paris. It's, mm. it's you know, the Moulin Rouge. It's, you know. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. All right. I like this. And we and have I love- to finish the evening with absinthe. You know, oh yes, because, yes, right. And Pepe would, <laughs> Le Pepe Pew would would, be, would give you, know. you thumbs up. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew is now dating Priscilla, and because he's a slut too, and he doesn't know like what she gets up to. I love this. So John, we're gonna we're gonna play the room where she waits. Oh, and lovely. Everyone, yeah, I love this. And everyone, this is the fourth track. And we've got to go. And I'm sorry. <laughs> like I've enjoyed this conversation <laughs> with you great. so much. It's been great uh, fun. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for such a beautiful album. Again, it is Parting Is by John Durant. Uh, he's on Facebook. Under um, your al- You're not under John Durant. You're actually under there as Burnt Belief, right? Did I get uh, that well, right? Well, I'm I- under, I- there's Burnt Belief. There's also John Durant. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay, so everyone, you can find him there. But go to his website, johndurant.com, no H in the John, because that's the way he likes it. <laughs> it's like a vanilla and good bourbon. That's how I roll. <laughs> there, that's how he rolls with Pepe. And uh, you can also go to burningshed.com and get it on Amazon. And here it is, the room where she waits. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, ladies. Yeah, cheers to you, Take too. Care. Salute. Mm-hmm. 